All right, let's build something cool. Today, we're gonna to be building something called Character Builder. So it's just a little mock-up that I made called Character Builder. Um, pretty much lets you manipulate your attributes of say your hero or character in a game, just like most video games. Um, lets you increase the value or decrease the value of one of your attributes, possibly from maybe a pool of points that you have. So decreasing this gets me more points so I can add them somewhere else. But this illustrates a few different things. We have a component. These two components, strength and speed, same component, just different values. We have a minus button and a plus button. So we're gonna be handling click events. We're gonna be managing state. Strength has its own value, speed has its own value. And we're also gonna be passing properties around. When we initially show the page, we wanna show different values for either the strength, the speed, or any other attributes that we have for our character or superhero that we're displaying. So to get started, what we need to do is I've created a default React application. I just used npx create React app and gave it the name of Character Builder, created this default app for me. So once we get Visual Studio Code open, we can go ahead, open Visual Studio Code, go to our terminal, click New Terminal, get our application started with npm start. When that kicks off, it'll open over here in your localhost 3000, display that default React logo. And that means we're good to go. We're in a good state. We are ready. So going to our index.js over here, we'll see that our application default app as always, we have a component called app. And that's where we're going to start our work. I'm just holding control or if you're on Mac holding command to be able to go ahead and click on that app, click a little shortcut so that it'll open up inside there. So that'll open up app.js if you have that open. So if I go app and click, then it goes into that app over there. See, it just jumped me from index.js to app.js. So once we're inside app.js over here, our app component, I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete all of that HTML. I'm gonna add a div here. You can see our page will react by just being blank. So we don't have any of that default stuff anymore. We don't need it. Go ahead and create an H1. And following our mockup over here, I'm gonna add the text character builder. So let's go ahead and add that over here. So we got our character builder. There we are. It's not centered like the mockup. So let's quickly over here add a style. In order to add a style, we have to use an object um, instead of a string in typical HTML. So over here, I'll add text align, and then I'll also center that text. Save it. And there we are, we got our character builder text in the center, just like our mockup. So let's go ahead and see what we're gonna be building. We wanna display below here a component, a component that will be our character's attributes. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go over here to SRC. I'm gonna create a brand new folder called components that we're gonna put all our components. So there we are, we have a components folder and inside there, we're gonna create a character, character attribute. Remember to use lowercase. And there we are, we have character attribute right there, .jsx. I'm also using simple React snippets. So I'll be able to type this code a little bit quicker and I'll show you how. I'm gonna use a shortcut, IMRC, hit tab, and there we are, we have our React component. If I type CC right there, it gives me two cursors on the screen. So I need to define our character component, our character attribute right there. And you can see it's in both places. It's creating the class and exporting the default character attribute. Later, we will import this character attribute so over here, I'm just gonna give it a div. And then inside of that div, what I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a quick little title. I'm gonna call this strength, kind of like our mockup that we have over there. So we have strength. It's not displaying on the screen since I saved because I haven't used it yet, our app component. In order to use it, I'm gonna be closing this side over here quickly. There we are. In order to use our component, I need to import it. So let's import 
our at character attribute from, and we are currently in the SRC directory. Because we're in the SRC directory, we need to go inside the components directory to get that character attribute. So if I go dot slash component slash character attribute, I now can use this character attribute. If I wanted to, I could copy and paste that name. We need to put it inside the div over here. Paste that self-closing tag. And now we have that displaying pretty good so far. So let's go inside of our character attribute. Our character attribute, we want it to follow this mockup over here. So strength looks like it's in the right place. That's pretty good. Below the strength, we need to add a div. Let's add a div because that'll bring us to the next line. Inside that div, I'm going to add a button. I'm going to add two buttons actually, so I'll quickly just copy that. And I will put a plus button and a minus button. I said that the opposite though, but here's the plus, there's a minus. And in between that, just for now, I'm going to add a little span and I'm just going to put a number, the number two. So let's go back to our React application and there we are. Let's also format that a little bit better. Let's go to our class name and let's call this, let's see, what should we call that? We could call that attribute area. That would be pretty good. Let's call this attribute area. So we have a little class called attribute area. I'm going to introduce you to adding a CSS file just for this component. So what I'll go ahead and just create a new file. And inside of here, I will paste or not paste, but I will type character attribute.css. And inside of this file over here, I'm going to define the attribute area that we just talked about. And I'm going to give it a margin left of 100 pixels. Because I want this over here on its margin to move to the side. I want these elements to show up more over here to the right. So I'll give it a margin on the left side of 100 pixels. Nothing happens when I hit save, expected. The reason for that is we haven't used the CSS yet. So over here in our character attribute class, I'm going to import that CSS. The way to do that is you type import and then character attribute dot CSS. Oh, type something wrong over there. So we have the character attribute CSS. Let's see, what's our error? Can't resolve character attribute. That means I must have made a typo over here. So let's copy that name to ensure that we got it right. Go ahead and copy. And then if we go back to our character attribute.jsx over there, what we can do to ensure that we get that right is paste that there. Oh, it looks like it's unable to find it. So let's see, quick little, quick little thing here to figure out why it's going wrong. We have our character attribute, we have our attribute JSX, and we are importing that. Ah, simple mistake here, you get to see me debug it. Here we go. I forgot to specify that it's in the current folder. That directory was kind of strange and didn't really showcase where it was. So I needed to import from the current directory. Very important. You need to do dot slash for the current directory. So there we are. We've imported that character attribute CSS, and now it's applying those styles correctly. In addition to that, I also want to style that span that we have in the middle with the two. So in order to do that, I just want to put some white space around it or little bit of space to give it um, to give it some more just to make it look a little bit nicer it doesn't it doesn't quite look like that mock-up we need space between that so let's go ahead and since we've got our CSS working now what I will do over here is we will call this class name equals and we are going to call that attribute value and there we go, we have attribute value. We're going to copy that name to make sure we don't get it wrong. And then we'll go to the CSS. 
inside the CSS, we'll define that other class. And in order to display this properly, we need to give it a width. Let's give it a width of, say, 100 pixels. We'll notice nothing happens. The reason for that is that it's a span, and it's only going to take up the space of what elements are inside it. So let's change the display to inline block. And now we have some space, but not quite right. Let's align that text in the center. Oops, sorry. There we are, center like that. And now we have our text centered. Perfect. So, so far, we kind of got the building blocks going. It's looking a little bit like that UI. If we want to make it look a little bit more like that UI, we can go back to our component over here. And then at the end of this div over here, go ahead and add that, say, HR, horizontal line. And there we go. It kind of looks kind of looks like our mock-up, pretty close, or close enough at least. So to continue with this mock-up over here that we have, what we need to do now is pass in some default values. We haven't done anything yet. We have a span with the number two. We have the strength over here but we're not getting those values from anywhere. So to kick this off, let's say that our values need to come from our app.js over here when we define the character attribute. When we define the character attribute, we can pass in an attribute right over here, a property, and this we can call strength. And we can also specify the initial value. And that initial value will be two over here. Or let's make it four so that we see that it's different on the screen. So these properties over here, we need to consume them. To consume those properties inside of the character attribute, we have access to a pro special property called this.props. So let's close this window over here. We'll navigate to character attribute. And inside of the character attribute over here, to illustrate this, I will go this dot props dot name and when I hit save it'll refresh and nothing will change because I wrote the exact same text same thing over here I'm gonna say this dot props dot initial value and it's four you can see that we're displaying that value so that's not too bad but if we want to increase and decrease these values we can't use properties we have to use state. So to manage that state over here, let's say the state will be equal to a value. And that value will come from my initial value that I get from the properties. So let's go ahead over here. And instead of using this.state.initialValue, we'll use this.state dot value. So we're not using this dot props dot initial value. We're using this dot state dot value. Hitting save, we see nothing changes. But let's go over here. Oops, not to that one. We'll go to our apps.js and we will change this value here. And I'll just say strengths and we'll see those values change. So it says strengths and it says five. It's pretty good so far. Go inside of that character attribute. We'll go back there. And then inside of our character attribute, we now need to increase or decrease those values somehow. Well, we got state, but how do we tell the UI to change? Well, let's see. We could add an event. Let's try adding an event on the plus button over here. Could do on click equals, and we need to make it equal to a function. So let's add a function called, we'll call it this.handle. Uh, increase, we'll call it that, this.handle increase. So over here, let's add a function called handle increase. Handle increase will be using an arrow function. The reason for that is that we need access to the this property. If we don't use an arrow function, a regular function, and a regular function, just to jog your memory, looks like this handle increase open close this but in this situation this would be null and that would be a problem we need the null we need that value 
This can work, this particular solution using a function like this, but it requires a little bit more setup, which I'll cover in another video. But to make this easy, we have handle increase over here, and we have access to this attribute. Through this, we can get access to the state. We can say this.state.value, and we could try changing it. We could say this.state.value, like this.value, plus one, and then save it. And then we could come back over here, and we could try clicking plus, but nothing's happening. So let's open up our console. Through our console, let's display a value to the screen, to the console over here so that we can see what's going on. We'll do console.log, and we'll say this.state.value to see what that number is. Now, let's click plus. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We see the number increasing, but the UI is not updating. How do we tell the UI to update? Easy. There is a method called this.setState where we can tell the UI to update and tell it what the new state is. So through this method, React will eventually update the UI. It will always be immediate, most likely, um, but React reserves the right to decide when the UI gets updated. So by calling this method, we're telling React that it needs to react to this change that we're making. So in order to do this, kind of like we set state up above, we're going to give it a new state, a new value. We don't want to change the old value, this.state.value. We don't want to mutate that object. These objects are supposed to be immutable. So previous state, we want to leave alone. We don't want to touch it. So we'll create a new state that we tell React about. And that new state over here will create an object, just as we did before. Actually, better than creating a new object is we will do this. We will say constant new value is going to be equal to this.state.value plus 1. We will delete this. And then we will also define that object over here. I put curly braces around it. And just like we have above value colon, now it's going to be value colon this.state.value, which is the current state that we have, which in our example over here would be 5. And we're going to add 1 to it. So this new value over here, which would be better called new state actually, the new state that we're creating is equal to this value, which is the previous value plus 1. And then we can tell the UI, hey, we got a new state over here and then update. Eventually, React will call this render method again and update. As you can see, eventually will be pretty immediate when I click plus, and the UI updates. The UI updates because we're setting a new state, and it calls this. Even cooler is that when it updates the UI, it only updates the HTML that changes. If I expand our HTML over here to show you what's changing on the screen, even though it's showing that all this HTML is changing, it's only really updating the number over here in the middle. So as I click plus, you can see that span is the only thing that changes, the span and the number, nothing else. That's all that gets updated. So to move forward, if we want to do decrease, pretty simple. We can just copy handle increase, copy that function, over here, put uh, decrease and yeah, we'll put decrease right there. So we're gonna handle decrease. And then instead of plus, we'll do minus. We'll set the new state right there. We'll clean that up just a little bit and remove those lines. And then on our minus button, just as before, we need to handle a click event. So to do that, we open up these curly braces and we type this.handle decrease. Now, when we come here, we can decrease that value and we can increase that value. I think that's pretty cool so far. But you know what? I keep adding these functions over and over. And what's really cool is maybe instead of handle decrease, we can just tell React, hey, 
um, let's create a function called handle um, change in value for or change in value by and you know instead of taking in you know increasing it by one or increasing by two or three or anything like that like here we just have plus one and minus one pretty simple if we wanted to do plus five and minus five we'd have to create two more functions over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it so that we just have one function one function that takes in a value a number and that number over here will either increase or decrease our value. If you recall, over here, I'm gonna show you an example in my console. Let's say, for example, that I had a number A equal to five. If I were to say A equals A plus two, the result would be seven, correct? But what if I said A equals A plus minus three? then we get a result of four. So even though I have this operator of plus, on the right hand side, I can give it a negative number. And that negative number could either increase or decrease the value. So knowing that, we can go ahead and create a function called handle change in value by, give it a number, and that number will either increase or decrease. So let's copy the one over here with this.state.value plus one. I'm going to paste that code over here. And then what I'm going to do is say plus num. So this number, this dot state dot value plus num, where num could either be a negative number or a positive number. Knowing this, we can take all of this code, handle increase, handle decrease, delete it, and replace it with a single function. So in order for onClick to work over here, we need to give it an event handler. I can't, simple, I can't simply say handle change in value by and give it over here and execute it say minus one. What's gonna happen is it's gonna call render over and over. So when it tries to render this UI, it's actually gonna execute this function. When it executes this function, it's gonna go through this code over here that's gonna call set state. When set state gets called, guess what? Set state kinda of eventually calls render. And when render gets called, it's gonna try and build that UI, execute this method again because it's got these braces over here, and then once again call set state, which will call render. Which is explained by this error over here, maximum update depth exceeded. This can happen when a component repeatedly calls set state inside component will update or component did update. Well, in our situation, it's not the component did up will update or did update event. For us, it's just we're calling render in an infinite amount of times. We are getting a stack overflow eventually. So in order to call this, what we need to do is assign an anonymous, we need to assign an anonymous function over here, an arrow function. And that arrow function is basically saying, hey, on click, when you want to do something, call this function over here. It's got no parameters, but inside it, it does the following. So we save this over here. That rebuilds our UI. And now that minus button works. So let's copy that code over here. Paste it over here for increase. Change that to a one. And now we can increase. We can decrease. But wait a minute, this is pretty cool. Now we can modify this UI. Sure, I'm doing minus one and plus one. What about, what if I were to change this so that you could do also increments by five and maybe an increment by 10 and another increment by 10 there and then do the same thing over here so that we have minus five and minus 10. Oh, mistake happened over there. We expected right there. You can see where it's squiggly. So good example of when something goes wrong right there. We got a squiggly line. So I just need to replace that over there. We're missing that parentheses and we're good to go. So now I can increase that number by 10, 105. 
I can decrease it by minus five. Oh, that's why that didn't work. We don't have those values there. Perfect. There we are. Go minus 10, minus 10, minus five, minus one, go plus one. And then plus 10 will bring us to zero, 10, 20. Pretty good. And then check it out. So we got this character builder. It has strengths. Let's go and add, let's go ahead and add a few more attributes. Now we can add speed. And speed has a default value of two. And now you can see we're managing these separately. So let's let's see what happens here when I change this value. It's independent of speed of strength. I can add this over here. Let's add a few more. Maybe we have a character attribute that uh, has something to do with uh, how well our character can make a sandwich, because that's that's an important attribute, and he's and he's quite good at it. So he just gets a hundred automatically. This is this is sandwich making skills, right? And then uh, there we <laughs> there we are. We can add we can add as many attributes as we want to our character here. Um, and each one of these will be managed independently. So quick recap of what we've done here is we have built this component, which we can theoretically continue to expand on, make even better through the um, use of components. But so far we have one component called character attribute. This character attribute over here has several buttons inside of it that can be used to either increase or decrease the value. We are passing from the character attribute, we're passing, or from the app component into the character attribute, we're passing some properties, a name and initial value. The initial value is used as a seed to create the state. So we create the state value of the attribute that we want to increase and decrease and set it initially. Then, in order to increase and decrease those values through buttons, we have events, and those events are click events on those buttons. They all actually call one method that's called handle change in value by, and it gives it a value. That value then changes the state, giving it a new state object and calling set state. When set state gets called, the UI gets updated independently of other components. And that's it for today. We've covered state, properties, and events.